how you format an address. Hi there. Welcome to the first edition of FAA's Captain's Report. I'm Chris Shorey, and sitting next to me is fellow captain Cody Coyley and other fellow captain Kevin Leary. Cody, what were your expectations for the team coming into this season? Well, we lost a lot of seniors last year, and we had new coaches coming in, and no one really knew what we were going to end up having this year. We have a lot of young, talented athletes, but we just didn't know if we could put it together. Oh uh, yeah, we lost 11, 11 seniors last year, and um, we come into this year, we're a young team, and we just want to win some games. Kevin Leary gets it started with a double to center field. Jesse Provost. Forrest Law. Next up is the freshman Hunter Law earning the opening day start in center field. And on this wild pitch, it gets away. Jesse Provost comes in from third to score. And a hustling Forrest Law scores all the way from second to make it 6-0 ponies. Still two outs in the first inning. Ryan Rebar, with Caleb Richard running on the pitch. 9-0 after one. Meanwhile, Jesse Provost was solid on the mound for the Ponies, throwing five strong innings. Here he is with the curveball. And the fastball. Cody Coyley showing us that the Pony offense was not done. Gets his third hit of the day here. Takes the curveball to the opposite field. Chris Shorey, Nick Stroud on second base. RBI single to left. Stroud running hard. Kevin Leary, the man on fire. Takes a first pitch curveball. Gone. Don't throw it there. Kevin Leary two for four with four RBIs on the day. That home run puts the Ponies up 16 to three in the sixth inning. As Dalton Turner awaits Kevin Leary at home plate and the Ponies celebrate the onslaught. Here you see it in slow motion. Do not throw the ball there to Kevin Leary. See you never. Matt Chapman, RBI single. The Pony's really pouring it on here. Ryan Rebar, who had two hits and scored three runs for the Ponies, is on to close out the game on the mound. And he works a perfect bottom of the six with two strikeouts to nail down the 17-3 Ponies win on opening day in Searsport. expecting to be a part of the starting lineup, but when um, coaches told me I'd be starting in center field the first game, it felt great just to be a part of this. And we had a great beginning of, beginning of the season and uh, just built on to what, we've, what we're at now. I mean, just great experience. 
Hunter is a special kid, um, great kid to uh, have the opportunity to coach. He's a freshman who started in center field for us this year, uh, at the beginning of the year in our first game, uh, which is asking a lot out of a freshman, but he's a fearless kid. Um, obviously has a bright future here at FA, and, and who knows if he could play ball beyond high school. He's certainly one of the kids in that category. Um, you know, Hunter is uh, a kid who doesn't let anything bother him, a kid who, you know, in the middle of the season um, wasn't in the lineup, and when we gave him a chance to get back in there, he just ran with it, and he did everything he could ask and more. Uh, he hit the ball well, he runs the bases very well, and he's a phenomenal defensive outfielder. Um, Hunter's the kind of kid that I'm sure other coaches who've seen him play are, are envious and uh, wish they had. Baby girl, you will never not to now. You'll match him without whenever. Cody Coyley up with two men on, nobody out in the first inning. That's a triple. Leary and Shinsuke around the score. As the catcher legs out the triple, part of a Five run first inning for Foxcroft. Sophomore Ryan Rebar got the start on the mound for the Ponies, and he was virtually untouchable. Rebar worked three innings, allowed just one hit, and struck out five Pirates in his first career high school start. This little guy was just overmatched. Pony's catalyst, leadoff hitter Caleb Richard, five for five, getting on base against Searsport. Starts a rally with a bunt single here. Rebar, double. Shinsuke, double. Leary, double. Cody Coyley, unstoppable so far, with an opposite field wall ball double to stretch the lead to 11 to zero in the second inning. And Nick Strout in on the action with a line drive single. In the top of the third, the point is continue to pour it on. Cody Coyley. His second triple of the day. Cody finished three for three with five RBIs. Shinsuke hustles home. Cameron Fadley was on base three times and scored three runs for the Ponies. Fadley shows off his wheels here, legging out an infield hit. And Forrest Law. Rushes a double to center field. Ponies would score nine runs in the third and stretch a lead out to 20 to zero. Jesse Provo scoring from first there. Starting off the fourth is junior catcher Mark Smith with a well-placed single. And a few batters later, we'll see the senior Nick Strout driving him in. The senior continues to swing the bat well. Scoring Smith and extending the lead to 22 to zero. In the fifth inning, Cameron Mushero, a junior, who's a standout defensive left fielder, shows he can use the bat as well. The two RBI sharp single. Scoring Matt Chapman and Mark Smith. Sophomore Cameron Fadley came on to close out the game for the Ponies, pitching the final two innings. And Fadley picked up right where Ryan Rebar left off. He worked two innings, giving up just one hit and one walk, no runs, while striking out five Pirates. So together he and Rebar combined for a five inning shutout with ten strikeouts and just two hits. Chris, how do you feel about the team's play so far to start the year? Well, we've outscored our opponents 42 to 
three. So I mean, I wouldn't say total domination, but some something something like that, close to that. All right. Uh, we want to learn a little bit more about the team. Can you tell us who some of the more colorful characters are in this roster? Shinsuke. 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 Yeah. But we can't leave out Doctor Dalton. Dalton. Doctor, right. Doctor, Why did you call him Doctor Dalton? Because every time someone like seems to get hurt, he's, he always runs up to him and goes, "You okay? What hurts? What hurts? Is it your arm? Hey, just hold it. When you get home, ice it for 25 minutes. What take Kevin's it off. doing is he is pretending to be a doctor off screen. <laughs> so wrong? Yeah, but you are not. <laughs> <laughs> At all. Can I? I, have to, I gotta go. between shortstop and second baseman. It's, it's a lot of work. Uh, just knowing being friends helps and not just on the field and stuff. Uh, just, you gotta know your shortstop. It's a lot harder than everybody thinks, just looking at it, but it's a, it's a lot of work and practice trying to figure out what everybody's doing. You just constantly got to be talking to each other, just let, letting them know what's going on, making sure they know what you're doing, what he's going to be doing. Uh, I've had a chance to work with Caleb for two years now, and um, he's just been a dream to coach, a uh, kid who just gives you everything he has, uh, works incredibly hard, you know, he'll always be asking if we can give him extra ground balls or extra swings after practice. Um, has a great attitude. He's a very smart player. He understands the mental side of the game. He knows to think before the pitch. He's a, he's a great base runner. He's always talking on the field. Um, and we just know we're going we're gonna to get his best effort every time out. Uh, fundamentally, as good as anybody. And I think you're going to see as he grows a bit and gets a little bit stronger these next few years, he's going to really blossom into a special high school baseball player. And I think um, you know, it's, he's going to be a huge part of everything we do for the next two years and I just can't wait to continue working with them next year. Jesse Provost getting his second career start here at the top of the first inning. Gets the backwards K. Pick it up in the third, game still scoreless. strikeout on the high fastball. But later on in the inning, first and third, Provost picks him off over to rebar, but the throw home is late. And Orono scores the first run of the game, taking a one to nothing lead. In the sixth, still one to nothing, ground ball to rebar, fires him out. On to the bottom of the sixth. Ryan Rebar drew a walk to lead off the bottom of the sixth, and then promptly stole second base. He'd advanced the third on a wild pitch, and with one out, Kevin Leary stepped to the plate in a huge spot. And Leary rips a single to the left to tie the game at one. On his bench, excited. Next up was number five hitter Cody Coyley. Coyley cracks a double to the left. Leary would have to hold up at third here. One out. But the Red Rides were able to clamp down and get out of the inning without any more damage. And the game, head to the seventh, tied at one. Jesse Provost carries a no-hitter into the top of the seventh inning. Gets a big strikeout for out number one. One-one ball game. Four and oh hitless. but it's broken up here on a soft single by Cody St. Louis as Fadley gets the ball into second base. Provost facing a tough lefty. Soft line drive to rebar as Provost points at his shortstop and says thank you. Foxcroft chance to win the game in the bottom of the seventh. After a leadoff single by Jesse Provost, Provost swipes second base, 
Jason Caffone is the winning run in scoring position. With Nick Stroud at the play. Nobody out. And Stroud loops a base hit to the left. Robos has to hold up at third. Still nobody out. After Stroud stole second base, Orno decided to intentionally walk slugger Caleb Richard. Bringing up shortstop Ryan Rebar. The base is loaded and still nobody out. Rebar with two strikes on him. Puts the ball in play. Orno shortstop can't come up with it. The ponies walk off with a 2-1 victory and the bench is jubilant. Jesse's um, a kid who we didn't really know what his role was going to be on this team. We knew he was in the mix as a pitcher. Um, we knew that you know he's a guy who throws strikes and who's a pretty good defensive outfielder and swings the bat pretty well and all those things. So we didn't know what we were going to get out of him. And then suddenly we find him um, not only winning every time he pitched on the mound, but doing so in an unbelievable manner. I mean, pitching in the toughest games of the year. Uh, in the regular season, and uh, and uh, unflappable on the mound, you know, winning close games, um, showing that he has nerves of steel, um, and just you know, with all due respect, Jesse's not a kid who's going to blow anyone away with his fastball or uh, his his raw talent, but he's a winner, and uh, and he knows how to make pitches when he has to. Caleb Smith makes his first start of the season on the mound and gets a K here. And in the bottom of the first, Foxcroft scores three runs on no hits. As you can see the difference between Cody Coyley and their catcher. Right here, another pass ball. So Foxcroft up three to one. Caleb Smith in the second. Sit! Never. Nick Strout here in the bottom of the second with a few runners on. And he grounds a single to the left side, plating Jesse Provost and giving the ponies a 4-1 lead. A few batters later, Shinsuke steps up with the bases loaded, and he rips a double into the right field corner. And that is going to clear the bases and break this game wide open. Foxcroft opens up a 7-1 lead. Congratulating the three runners who just scored. A few batters later, Cody Coyley with an RBI single up the middle, collating Shinsuke, making it 8 1 Boxcroft. Meanwhile, Caleb Smith settling in on the mound, getting a K there, a K here, another K, a K. The slow curveball, see ya. And his ninth strikeout looking, Caleb Smith settling in. Here in the sixth inning, shortstop Ryan Rebar shows everyone how to hit a curveball. That's a double. Rebar ended up being stranded on base. Move to the seventh. Shinsuke comes on a relief of Caleb Smith, and he promptly strikes out his first hitter. He does his 
little victory jumping dance. A few batters later, Mike Ring grounds sharply to third. Kevin Leary makes a diving stop and throws across the diamond for the game's final out. Well, the final score is Foxcroft 10, Holton 3. Foxcroft improving to 4-0 on the year. And Holton falling to 0-2. and being versatile, playing most of the positions on the field. I like being one of those guys that can um, do that, get me in where I need to, and wherever I can play a position, that's how I get in. Force is another kid who every coach would love to have. Um, just a tremendous attitude and work ethic. Um, at the beginning of the year, you know, we'd, we were in the gym, and you know, he'd win every sprint. Now, he's not the fastest guy on the team, but came into the season in great shape, and he just outworked a lot of players. And you know, he's one of the most improved players, I think, from last year to this year. Offensively, he's gotten better. He's gotten stronger. Um, I think you know, he has the potential to be a, a great high school hitter. And defensively, you know, the most versatile player on our team. Um, he's an excellent catcher who would be you know, the best catcher on most teams in the state. We happen to have a great catcher already, but uh, Forrest can fill in just about anywhere. You know, we had him playing first base, shortstop, outfield, second. I mean, you can play third. There's really nowhere on the field where we can't help you. He's a plus defender in any position on the field. And, um, you know, just a, a tremendous attitude and a, a guy who I think makes everybody better around him and will be, you know, a key part of what we do for the next two years. Ryan Rebar getting his second start of the season. Gets the K here in the top of the first. But now with a runner on third base and one out. Shallow fly ball to right field. Jesse Provost comes on to make the catch. They'll test his arm here. Bad idea as Provost guns him down and the bench is fired up after Jesse makes that throw. Scoreless after half an inning. In the bottom of the first with two outs and no beyond, Shinsuke rips a single to left and then advances to second on a wild pitch. Kevin Leary crushes a double over the left fielder's head. Kinsuke races around to score the Pony's first run. And the Pony offense wasn't quite done. Cody Coyley steps up and loops a base hit to left. Kevin Leary trying to score from second. And he does so, giving the Ponies a 2 nothing lead. Ryan Rebar in the top of the second. Backwards K. Here in the third. Man on second base. See ya. Cody Corley steps up. Two men on. Two outs. Two run game. Rips the ball to left. He won't stop at second. Corley's third triple of the year. Pushes the lead to four to zero. Yet another huge hit for Cody Coyley. Here in the top of the fourth with two runners on, Central attempts a double steal. Cody Coyley says, not today. Guns down the lead runner at third. 
bottom of the fourth, Jesse Provost hammers a double. As the ponies look to add some insurance runs. Next up is Nick Strout. The senior's been swinging a hot bat, and that continues right here. The blue single to the left. Jesse Provost hustles in to score and make it 5-1 FA. Strout alertly takes second on the throw home. A few betters later with two outs, Ryan Rebar with a seeing eye single up the middle and Strout was able to hustle home and score the sixth Foxcroft run. Ryan Rebar in the top of the fifth, getting his fourth K of the day. Looking. And then we have Forrest Law in the bottom of the sixth. Hits a double into the right center field gap. Law running hard right out of the box. Next up is a pinch hitter, Chris Shorey, who's called upon to lay down a sacrifice bunt. Perfectly executed. Runs hard through first base. Bang, bang play questionably called out, but no one covers home and Forrest Law alertly takes the run, putting the ponies up 7-1 in the sixth as the bench recognizes Law's good base running and Shorey's execution of the bunt. Early season MVP candidate Jesse Provost gets his second double of the day right here. Provost doing everything a baseball player can do, possibly, to help the team win as he rounds second heart. And he'll come on to close out the game, picking up where Rebar left off. Rebar solid through six, and Provost gets the strikeout to end the game and seal a 7-1 victory. the staff and innings pitched and um, I'm, I'm that type of guy that can come in whenever they need me on short rests or whenever. Um, efficient mostly, pound the strike zone, um, do whatever they ask me to do on the mound. Uh, what is there to say about the Falcon? Uh, he soared to great heights this year. Um, you know, early on in the year, I, I kind of picked on Caleb a little bit. Uh, we called him Hollywood because he was texting at practice. And uh, uh, at the end of the day, Caleb was um, a kid who I think is determined to play college ball and who showed that he, he wanted it in every single way. And he did every single thing we asked him to do. He was the kind of kid that if we talked to the team, if we had something to clarify or something to explain, he would be front and center looking you right in the eye. Uh, every time and um, you know that's something that we certainly appreciated and we, you know Caleb um, as a player you know uh, he, he doesn't overpower people didn't strike out a ton of people but he just won you know he just he just went out and he refused to throw the ball down the middle he executed when he had to and and he's tough you know I wouldn't want to coach against him if he was on the mound I, I wouldn't want to have to take down Caleb Smith I wouldn't and his future is pretty bright you know, we'll see as he gets a little bit stronger um, what he can do on the mound, but uh, it certainly will be worth tuning in for. Sophomore Caleb Smith gets the ball at Mahaney Diamond in Orono, making his second start of the year. And he starts off the game with a K. Ponies didn't do anything in the first two innings, and in the top of the third, the bats come alive. Lead off hitter Caleb Richard gets things started with a double into the right center gap. Ponies trail 2-0 at this point. 
Next up was sophomore shortstop Ryan Rebar, and he laces a triple into the right center gap. That's going to score Richard easily and pull the ponies within one. A few batters later, Porno decides to intentionally walk slugger Kevin Leary, bringing Shinsuke to the plate with two on and two outs after Leary steals second. And Shinsuke rips a double in the left field corner, and that big two out hit gives the Ponies a 3 2 lead. Falcon holds down Orno. Cameron Fadley steps up and rips it to left. The fleet-footed Fadley gets on to start things. Caleb Richard would then walk, bringing up Ryan Rebar. <laughs> Don't try to elevate the fastball on that guy. Fadley will score, Richard moves up to second. Cody Coley then comes up with second and third. And delivers. Two RBI single for Cody Coley. Rebar trucks around third and scores standing up. Shinsuke Mikame, loop single to center. Jesse Provost with the drawn in infield. Line drive up the middle. Shinsuke scores easily. Nick get the let out. Strout lays down a big bunt here. He's too quick. He'll beat the throw, which gets away. He'll stay at first. As Provost running hard all the way, scores from second on the bunt. Rebar already with a single and a triple on the day. Hits this one, he's gonna get to that. No, he's not. That's a double. Possibly could have had three, but Rebar wants the cycle, which he would not get. WTP. Forrest Law with Jesse Provost on second. Don't fight the law. Rips it through the left side. Provost would score yet another run. As the Pony's really pouring it on 15 to five now. But Orno would cut the lead to 15, 10 and load the bases with uh, Shinsuke on relief. And he gets out of the jam with a backwards K. Hanging to the top of the sixth. Pony's added uh, an insurance run on a Ryan Rebar ground out. Take a 16-10 lead. Back out in the bottom of the sixth. Shinsuke was sharp. Okay there, and another one. Top of the seventh with two outs and no one on. Forrest Law, the base hit. And then Law shows that he knows how to run the bases. Swipe second. And Nick Stroud, it's a ground ball to short. And on the throw, Forest Law is not going to stop. Just going to keep going on the high throw. And by the time they realize what's happening, he's scored. To give the ponies a valuable insurance run. The provost, who's been so steady all year on the mound for the ponies, in to try to nail down the victory. And picks up a K. We're out number two. Base is still loaded here. And a hard one hopper, speared by Caleb Richard, who throws the first for the out. And the ponies emerge with a hard fought victory and move to 6 0.
after the Orno game. I think it gave our team a lot of confidence hitting wise. We faced one of their aces and we pounded them and got them out of there in the early innings. And throughout the season after that game we have been solid and hitting the ball well. And that game I think was a turning point for us hitting. We, uh, we obviously show that. Finished out strong 16 and out. Good. Well we knew coming into the year that Ryan Reber was a special baseball player, you know, started a, every game as a freshman last year, and we knew he'd be improved, but I don't think anyone thought he could, you know, take this big of a step forward this soon. Um, the type of year he had offensively, you know, he improved in, in every way. Um, just a, a tremendous defensive shortstop, you know, the best I saw this year. Uh, great arm, fields the ball well, he's getting better and better at the mental side of things. Um, and on the mound, I mean, he's really turning into one of the better pitchers in the state as well. Throws hard, it's good command, good curveball. Um, really, I mean, the sky's the limit for him. Um, he's a guy who I'm just excited to see, see him you know, take even another step forward next year and just uh, be a key leader and a, a big part of everything that we do. And I think that you know, you're gonna see him being one of the state's best players you know, next year. I mean, he already is really, but he's just gonna keep getting better. Jesse Provost, fresh off his brilliant outing against Orno, gets the start against Lee and grabs a K in the first. In the bottom of the inning, Cody Coyley off uh, pitcher Dustin Sautel laces a single, but Cody would be stranded on the bases. In the second, Provost, who is outstanding in this game, continues to look sharp with the K. Next hitter. Ponies get a bit of a scare as Provost is hit. And Coach Chevalier comes running out of the dugout and the infielders come in to check on their pitcher. Provost will remain in the game and get the next hitter to ground out to Kevin Leary and get out of the inning. Top of the fourth, the giant Venezuelan import Anthony Perez turns around a Provost fastball. Turns into a solo shot for the game's first run, giving Lee a 1 0 lead. Provost would settle down and get out of that inning and then work a smooth fifth. Here he is with a punch out. Ponies come up to bat trailing 1 0, needing Nick Straff to get on base. It's a slow grounder to second and hustles all the way and beats it out. And the Pony's a key leadoff runner. Next up was Cameron Fadley with a fly ball that ended up being dropped. Giving the Ponies first and second with nobody out is Caleb Richard coming to the plate. Richard looks down for the signs, gets the bunt sign, knows he has a job to do. And he does his job beautifully, advancing the runners to second and third with one out. And then Lee would choose to intentionally walk Ryan Rebar to load the bases for Cody Coyley. Dangerous idea. Still just one out. Lee still clinging to a one nothing lead. And Coyley puts the ball in play and becomes an RBI ground out, tying the game at one. Jesse Provost in the top of the six, having to face the Venezuelan again. Locates the fastball down and away and gets the harmless fly out to get the let out Strout. And then Strout, up with Forrest Law on first, takes the fastball away as Forrest swipes second. And Nick Strout reaches on an air and would steal second. Now, Fadley comes up with second and third. Big at bat. One out. Fly ball to center isn't deep enough. Throw home. Not nearly in time. 
as Forrest Law scores the go-ahead run. 2-1 Ponies, the dugout celebrates, letting Law and Fadley know they did their jobs. Fadley fired up. Provost comes out to try to preserve the 2-1 lead in the top of the seven. Strikes out the first hitter. Gets the second guy, and then after a single and a steal of second, tying run on second, Provost has to bear down. Gets him looking on the inside fastball, and the Ponies win 2-1 to one to move to 7-0 and oh on the season. Provost, an unbelievable performance. No walks. Four hits. Complete game. One and one. Against Lee really just set the tone for the rest of the year. You know, we were coming into the stretch run, and you know, we we felt really invincible after that come from behind win, and we knew that we were just going to be able to wear teams down and eventually just win game after game, which we were able to do. And it it just made us realize that you know, we if we play our best game, we cannot be beat, and uh, we just got to stick with the other team and keep it rolling. Chris, uh, oh man, Chris Shorey, one of our three captains, uh, you know, did everything he could do to help the team in whatever way it was, which, you know, coaching first base, being my uh, personal catcher when I hit outfields, the fly balls during infield practice, uh, all these little things he did, uh, work in the bucket. Um, Chris, uh, you know, on every team, you know, every good team has a certain chemistry of course right and and chemistry is important and and um, you need to be able to joke around with each other and you need to be able to uh, sometimes pick on certain people and Chris you know bore the brunt of that pretty uh, pretty strongly for me and I had a great time getting to know him and uh, uh, he's a, a hilarious kid who I think has a pretty strong future in, uh, in politics and I wish him the best in uh, football this fall. After Foxcroft failed to score in the top of the first, Rebar comes out in the bottom of the first, gets a K there, but in the bottom of the second, with a man on second already, bit of trouble here, an RBI double will push the first run of the game across and set up a second and third nobody out situation for Dexter. Rebar in a jam, how does he react? They attempt to squeeze, Coily calls for the ball away, can't get the bunt down, the ponies execute the pickle properly and get him out. Now one out, man on second, softly hit to Leary, 
charges hard and a fine play. Two outs, man on third. Rebar not out of the woods yet. See ya. Backwards K on the break. Ponies don't score and Rebar comes out and has a solid bottom of the third. The Ponies trailing 1-0 to the top of the fourth. Ryan Rebar is hit. We get the leadoff man on base. Rebar promptly steals second base. Kevin Leary then doubled to tie the game at one. But Dexter would come right back and score a run and get more runners on base. Rebar able to work out of the jam with a K. Entering the fifth, the Ponies trailed 2-1. And the weather was bad. It looked like this one could be called early. We needed Caleb Smith to get on base. Ground ball to short. And he gets on on the bad throw. That was with one out. The Ponies then called on Nick Stroud, who didn't start. Had a problem with his contact lens. Had his glasses uh, delivered in the middle of the game. Came up here. Caleb Smith steals second. And one-eyed Stroud. Looking to see what he can do. And the senior bears down and rips a shot in the gap in left center into the wind. Caleb Smith reads it well, and he's going to come around and score easily for second. And Stroud in with a stand-up double to tie the game at two. Tony's bench fired up. And the Ponies offense looking for more. Ryan Rebar came up with two on and two out. A big spot. Rebar with a high fly ball to right field on a very windy day. Right field there dies but can't come up with it. Stroud's going to score and right behind is Cameron Fadley. Giving the Ponies a 4-2 lead. And Stroud is fired up. Kevin Leary comes up and gets his second into the day with a sharp single, but he's stranded. So they ask Rebar to go get some outs, which he does. Boris Law makes a nice play here. Rebar going to work. Oh, see ya. Coily wants to throw it around at his third out. Forrest Law comes up in the top of the sixth and gets himself on with a big walk. Steal second. Something the ponies do a lot of. And Caleb Smith's got to get him in. Forrest alertly takes third on the pass ball. Aggressive as usual. And the Falcon. It's a rocket to right, oh, a tiny ground ball, which gets through and Forrest Law scores. Rebar comes in the bottom of the sixth, has a one, two, three inning. Pony's offense not done, badly. Slow roller down the third baseline, you're just not gonna throw him out from there. Badly gets his wheels on. Cody Coyley after Leary's intentionally walked with an RBI single through the left side. Badly, great base running there, reading that ball through and a graceful slide into home. So the Ponies extending their lead here. As Forrest Law hits the sack fly to left, scoring the big fella, Kevin Leary, and pushing the lead to 7-2. to two. Rebar still in the game and looking to finish off the Tigers. It's a fly ball to Cameron Badley. Rocks all in the center field. We're out number one. Next hitter, it's a soft ground in a second. Caleb Richard comes up with it. This was after a one-out single. And with two outs and a runner on second, Rebar induces another soft fly ball to center. Cameron Fadley's all over it. And the Ponies get a scare in Dexter, but emerge 
with a solid 7-2 win as they played very well in the late innings. Ryan Rebar went the distance on the mound, uh, giving up three hits, one earned run, and striking out five Tigers. Ponies moved to 8-0 on the season. undefeated and all that is just great and hopefully we can make it to the playoffs and go to states and win that. Well I had Luke on the JV team last year you know and I was really impressed with his attitude his work ethic and you know the strong fundamentals he has and he came in this year and you know he was, he's grown and he looked better and I thought you know this is a, a good young player and didn't really you know see him in the mix for playing time on varsity this year so we kept him on JV wanting him to get you know regular playing time and improve and then you know the JV team ended up not practicing or playing a lot of games and we thought you know this is a kid we're hurting by having him down there so after six or seven games you know I called him up and said Luke we want to have you come up for varsity for the rest of the year and you know he, he was thrilled and he came up and from that point on just did everything you could ask for. You know, we asked him to be our bullpen catcher, and he, you know, relished that role. Did a great job. He was always ready to warm up pitchers between innings, warm up pitchers in the bullpen. Um, practiced very hard every day. You know, is an outstanding defensive outfielder. He's getting better as a hitter, and I think you see as he grows and gets a bit stronger, he's you know going to be a guy who's certainly going to be in the mix for starting job um, next year and, and as a senior. So. Just a great kid with great attitude, and I you know, look forward to having him for two more years. Ryan Rebar in the leadoff spot against Central, and he starts the game with a single to right. Rebar immediately steals second base and goes all the way to third on the overthrow. Cameron Badley hitting the two hole. Badley would hit a fly ball to right and Rebar scores giving the ponies a 1-0 lead. Meanwhile, Caleb Smith went to work on a very windy day. Wind was blowing in hard from center field. Here, what looks to be a fly ball to center. It's pushed all the way back to the infield and Ryan Rebar ends up making the catch. Ponies would fail to score in the second. Field of Smith came back out in the bottom of the second and he gets a K with the looping curveball. And with one man on, Smith uses a fly ball to center. Cameron Fowley coming on hard, makes a diving catch. Alertly gets up, throws to first, and doubles off the runner, and the Ponies get out of the inning. Strout congratulates his fellow outfielder. Ponies still cling to a 1-0 lead in the third. Cameron Fadley rips a one-out double into the corner. Cody Coyley steps to the plate. And he hits a uh, grounder to short. Badly holds up as he should. Throw ends up getting away, and Badly is not going to stop. He's going to keep going and score, giving the ponies a 2 0 lead. Two 
Two batters later, Shinsuke stepped to the plate with two outs and singled sharply to center. Coily sent and the throw to the plate is going to be in time on a questionable call. Coily's punched out. The inning's over. Pony's still just up 2-0. Falcon continuing to cruise on the mound. Ponies come up in the top of the fourth. Strout with a sharp single. After stealing second, takes third on the drop ball four. And Caleb Smith steals second. Rebar comes up. With two outs, ground back to the pitcher, but the pitcher's throw gets away and two runs will score. Putting the ponies ahead four to nothing. Big costly error by the pitcher. Ground ball up the middle for Fadley. Base knock. And Rebar gets thrown out at the plate. Caleb Smith back to work in the fourth. The Central scored one run and threatened to score more. He buckles down with a K. And then another K. Two of his seven Ks coming in the fourth. Tony's offense wouldn't do much else, but four, uh, four runs was all Caleb Smith needed to work with. There's another K in the fifth. And another one. On to the sixth, two outs and a runner on second. Central threatening, Ponies pitch out and Cody Coyley guns David Lord down at third. Big play. 4-1 lead in the seventh. And Smith, who would go the distance, giving up just three hits and one earned run, finishes the job. Ponies move to 9-0. Dan's just a great kid to have around, uh, you know, very intelligent, good sense of humor. Um, you know, when I kind of discovered the, the iPad program that we could use to score games, um, I immediately thought that Dan would be the guy to do it. Um, I knew he understood how to keep a scorebook. I knew he'd be attentive and take it seriously, and he did. You know, I just showed him the program, and he taught himself how to do it, and then did it for us all year, and now, you know, we have newspapers writing articles about us doing that, you know, being the only school in Maine, and we have all these great statistics instantly available after games, and people could follow games online while we were playing if they couldn't come, and, you know, that's all because of Dan's efforts. And um, just, again, another guy I'm glad we're going to have for two more years. Um, got better, much better as a player this year. You know, keeps improving, and I look forward to see what he can do next year. Chap, uh, you know, a great kid who had a great year last year on JV as a sophomore. Um, and, you know, this year his role on the team probably wasn't what he had hoped it would be. He didn't really get a lot of playing time. Um, and, you know, and with all, in all honesty, a kid who has a pretty strong case for being upset about that. Um, because I think on most of the teams in our league, he would be a starting outfielder. We have a lot of great outfielders. And, uh, and Chap, you know, it just kind of worked out that way. Never once did he complain, never once did he have a bad attitude. Uh, in fact, you know, you could say this about just about every kid on the team, but Chap did everything 100% all the time. Um, and he did get a lot better. We saw him make great strides, and he's a kid who next year is certainly going to be in the mix. don't score in the top of the first and Rebar comes in the bottom of the first and after a long at-bat gets Perez to ground out to third. Nice play by Leary. 
And here in the top of the second, the wheels fall off for Lee. Coily gets it started with a single. One out. Steals second. Lefty catcher can't throw him out. Shinsuke hits a ground ball to third. Perez cannot make the play. Get used to this. You'll see on this, nobody covers third there, by the way. You'll see Caleb Richard walk here in a display of the importance of infield defense. There's Nick Stroud. It's a ground ball to the shortstop. That gets through. Falcon scores. Fadley, ground ball to Perez. That eats him up. Rebar, ground ball to short. This is not instant replay. That gets through. And Stroud will score all the way from second. As you see Cameron Fadley go from home to third on a ground ball to the shortstop. Great base running for Cameron. Leary, ground ball to short. Does get thrown out, but it's an RBI scoring Fadley. Coily, RBI single for him. Ryan Rebar goes to work with an eight run lead, picks up a K, and then comes right back and adds another backwards K with a fastball. He'd have six Ks on the day. Pony's defense comes off the field and is fired up. This was expected to be a much tougher game. Meanwhile, in the third, Falcon doubles into the right field corner. He'd end up being stranded. But the eight run lead was more than enough for Rebar. He went back to work in the third. Another K. In the fourth, fly ball into the gap in left center and Cameron Mushwell ranges to make a nice running catch. And the runner on first and two outs. Rebar gets a ground ball to Kevin Leary. What a great game at third. And he throws to Richard for the force that ends the inning. Dalton Turner starting it out in the top of the fifth. And the doctor is in. A double to right off the wall. After an absurd call that he missed first base, Luke Olsen comes up with nobody on. And Luke, in his first career varsity at bat, lines a single to right field. Congratulations, Luke. And Ryan Rebar continuing to dominate on the mound as he gets the ground out here to Kevin Leatherman Leary. Nice swing there on the high Rebar fastball. Bottom of the sixth. Leary lays out to his left and throws him out. What a play. What a play. Keeping the shutout intact. And then a man on third and Forrest Law ranges up the middle and beats him to the bag to keep the shutout alive. Back to back great plays by the Ponies left side. Bottom of the seventh, Shinsuke, wild man Nakame on and Leary is everywhere. Can't get anything by him. And here, you may wonder, can he go to his right? Can he? Why, yes, he can. With two outs, Shinsuke gets the K looking on his nasty curve ball. And Rebar and Shin combined for a five hit shutout. Seven Ks and just one base on balls. As the ponies excited. Move to 10 and 0 with a big win on the road.
Cameron is another guy that's just so fun to have on your team. Um, does everything with incredible intensity, you know, practices like a game. Um, really holds himself to a high standard, you know, expects the best of himself every day. Doesn't matter who's watching or what's on the line. Um, always gives maximum effort. You know, a really good defensive outfielder, guy who played a lot of, a lot of big innings for us in left field this year. Um, he's fearless out there. You know, he's fast, he's got a strong arm, and, you know, I, again, another guy I'm, I had last year on JV, you know, loved coaching, loved having him this year, and I'm uh, excited that we got one more year with him next year. Just a great kid, with a great attitude, and, um, you know, a big part of everything we did this year. After a long bus ride to Holton, Pony showed that they're ready to go, ready to look to move to 11-0 on the season against a solid Holton squad. Bottom of the first, Caleb Smith, who got the start. It's a pop-up, and Cody Coyley is just everywhere in this game. It's a nice running grab. Top of the second, Coily rips a base hit. Two batters later, Caleb Richard would come to play with the bases loaded and draw a walk. The ponies on the board to take a 1 0 lead. In the second, Caleb Smith settling in, gets another pop up. Coily makes another play. And a ground ball, the Forest Law is right. Smith gets over to cover first, and the ponies execute that tricky play beautifully. In the third, Shinsuke rips a double to left. But the ponies cannot push him across, and they continue clinging to a 1 0 lead. Just fine with Caleb Smith, who comes out and works a perfect third. Ending with a fly ball to Gold Glover, Cameron Fadley. And with the ponies up 1-0, Stroud earns a leadoff walk, and he will steal second. And then after Caleb Smith walks, he will take second base, and two batters later, with two outs now, Fadley prevents the stranding with an RBI single making it 2-0, and the third run will score on a wild pitch. So the running ponies taking advantage. Caleb Smith does yield a run in the fourth, but gets a couple of strikeouts here. That one looking outside the corner. And in the fifth, Rebar leads off by getting hit which he did many times this year. He'll steal second, which he also did many times.
Coily rips a double, scoring rebar. Not bad there for the sledgehammer. And with two outs, Caleb Smith helping his own cause to stretch the lead to five to one Foxcroft. Smith doing it on the mound and with the bat. As the Falcon gets into his nest there. In the fifth, Holton pitcher Ian Gervais rips the ball into the gap, scoring one run, but he gets greedy, looking to stretch it into a triple. That's a mistake. Rebar guns him down. Rebar caught the relay throw from Musharel. Tony's executed that perfectly. And on to the sixth, Foxcroft looks to add on to the lead for Caleb Smith. Second baseman Caleb Richard gets things started with a single. Cameron Fadley up next, has to lay down a bunt, and he does so beautifully, moving Richard to second and nearly beating it out. Shinsuke then stepped up and scorched a double to left. Scoring Richard, extending the lead to 6-2. Ryan Rebar then came to the plate. And he gets a shot to left. And that's going to score Shin. Extend the lead to 7-2. Rebar alertly takes second on a throw home. Kevin Leary stepped up with two outs and looked to add the knockout blow. Gone. That's going to clear the fence in left field by a good 50 feet. His second of the year. Tony's pouring it on in what was a close game. Now 9-2. Leary enjoying his home run trough on the bench, waiting to greet him. In the sixth with two on and nobody out. A high pop up. Coily catches it with ease. Now with two outs. The second out here rather. Nick Stroud ends the inning with a running catch. Move to the bottom of the seven. Ground ball to Luke Olson, who dives and makes a great play. He's called safe at first. You gotta make that call, dude. What a play by Luke. And yet another pop up to Coyle, who once again proves solid. Shinsuke getting in some trouble here. Things getting interesting. Base is loaded. But Mikame is not worried as he finishes off Holton. Team moves to 11 and 0. Kalen Smith flies to 4 and 0. We got Falcon. We got Hunter. Where's Mosh? There he goes. Why don't you guys uh, take me through your, your post-game meal choice? Just, just, oh, what, just, uh, just walk us right through it, first start to all, finish. Hunter thought this one through really well. Oh, first of all, Hunter, how are we going there? Let me tell Hunter, a story here. Hunter decides. All right, Hunter, go ahead. Yeah, so we went to the local IPA, and 
and, uh, yeah, and Holton, Maine, after a big 9-6 uh, win. Right, and couldn't find anything to eat, and I'm searching. I go down the aisle to the... Uh, to the chicken frozen section. Yeah, okay. And, uh, I see this chicken, $5. Sure, Look something convenient, cheap, why not? Why couldn't you go to KFC? And uh, I don't like KFC. And <laughs> so, how is the chicken? So I got the chicken. Let him, let him tell the story. I got the buffalo chicken, I take it outside and I show it to Coach. And uh, he's reading it, telling me that uh, you, need a, you need to freeze it. And I believe the, be. pa the package said, Cook thoroughly. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't ambiguous. It was pretty clear. I decided I'd test it out, though. So when I got on the bus, I had four pieces of this uncooked chicken, and my Salmonella. stomach hurt afterwards. Salmonella poisoning. Now, did you in fact vomit? No, I didn't. You didn't. Very I thought close. you did. Everyone up front thought you vomited. He came very close. Yeah, but, he was uh, right. The, the, the Tom did the trick, and. Uh, <laughs> Thank you so, ladies for the thumbs. You actually got through four pieces? Like you after the first bite, you weren't like, wow, this is uncooked chicken. No, no, no. Well, the first bite he's like, oh, this is really good, guys. <laughs> it's not wrong. I looked, I was gonna offer it to the rest of the team, but <laughs> I even have a face. Do I have a face on it? You got something to say? It was fantastic. Really? <laughs> what the was your uh, <laughs> What else did you have? Chocolate milk and uh... I'm washing it up with some plain old chocolate milk. Yeah, what else did you eat though? Some yogurts. Oh, some yogurts. Okay, sensible. Couldn't even get into his yogurt. Dr. D, were you concerned with the look on Hunter's face as a medical professional? You know, I was just like laughing, bro. I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty funny. It was great. I mean, it was his own stupidity. I mean, he shouldn't have ate it for five for the guy's room. But there was no worries at the end. Tom's didn't deal with it. Tom's. Tom, I mean, who, who had Tom's? Uh, one, of the, one of the girls oh, that had Tom's. Oh, Lauren had Tom's. Oh, okay. Yeah, special thanks to uh, Lauren who had the Tom's. Yeah, here we got Shin. Did he have his standard post meal, uh, post game meal of an entire chicken? <laughs> Can't even see in here, it's too dark. You know, I don't think he's been awake. Both down and back on the bus. Yeah, that doesn't look comfortable at all. <laughs> there we go. What's going on way in the back here? Yeah. How do you guys feel about being 11 and 0? So good. We expected it really. Until we win states, I'm not happy. Yeah. That's a good answer. Yeah. This How did that home run feel, Kevin? So good! Yeah. So good! Is it true you made out yes. with the baseball? I think it's dead. <laughs> Is it true you made out with the baseball? Are you going to sleep with that baseball tonight? I am. Does that feel better? You know what? Wake up. This is my second date for fall. baseball in FA because that's my favorite sport. I play in Japan for a while. And why I like baseball, I don't know. I like to hit in baseball hard. Like last year I got three homer, but not this year yet. But I don't really care much. But I still try to hit hard. And also I like to make friends in baseball team. It's like a lot of fun to hang out with them. And also what else? Let me think. And I like the new coach, Coach Chevalier, Coach Jamie. They work hard and now we're on the preseason. I mean, we might get the state this year. I'm so excited. I wish I can win the state. Then, yeah, and I like to talk to people. Everyone laughs at me. I really don't know why, but still, everyone likes me somehow some reason because I'm probably Japanese but uh yeah that's about it I like FA baseball team and hopefully we won the state this year uh, Shinsuke is a great kid I'm just so glad that he chose to come to school in the United States and that he chose Foxcroft Academy um, not only is he a great baseball player but just a wonderful kid with a great personality uh, 
who provides a lot of comic relief for our team. Um, I think unintentionally sometimes, just for whatever reason, everything he does is funny. Uh, everyone loves Shin, loves having him on the team. Uh, you know, swings harder than anybody I've seen at the high school level. Uh, hits just rockets all the time. And I think you're going to see him come back and have a really strong senior year, um, not just offensively, but also as an infielder. You know, he DH for us a lot this year, but he's a guy who could have been playing shortstop on a lot of teams. That's just how much depth we had. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to have one more year to work with Shin.